There was a lot of anxiety because of the unknown. I didn't know what was gonna happen. And it is really difficult to accept that you're gonna have your permanent teeth permanently removed. So for me, that helped me the most. Today, I'm joined by Sharala, who's had her dental implants for over two years now, and she's gonna reveal five secret tips that helped her minimize discomfort after dental implant surgery. Wait for tip number five, because that one helped me the most. And if you're curious about what dental implants could cost you, download the dental implant cost guide in the description below. So let's get into it. What is tip number one? Tip number one is for swelling, and it is ice. Ice is your friend. Nubia is going to send you home with an ice pack that wraps around your head. So you're going to want to keep that on and then rotate 20 minutes on and 20 minutes off. And so um, you're going to want to do that. I did it probably longer than necessary, but I made sure I had something that I needed to be picture perfect for in seven days. So I made sure to be religious with my timing of my ice. I kept it on, I did it throughout the night, and I just made sure that I followed the aftercare instructions to a T. And also I have heard others in the club talk about um, the use of this natural remedy called Arnica. It comes in a cream and also um, in a pill and they say that it reduces and minimizes bruising. So that may be an option as well. So how long did it take for um, your swelling or bruising to subside? Yeah, so for me, I didn't have any bruising in Koi. Um, and my swelling was, it was small. It, was, uh, it wasn't until after the fact, I looked back at pictures that I could see my cheeks were like little chubby chipmunks. <laughs> um, and so I would say looking at pictures, um, the first few days were fine, but probably days four through seven was where my head and the chubby cheeks. And then after that, like I was back down to small face. And, and again, like bruising, I didn't experience any bruising. Awesome. Let's move on to um, the next one. So what is tip number two? Tip number two is to prepare your home and prepare a ride to and from. So in preparing your home, what's going to be most important is that you have a comfy space identified for ultimate healing vibes, right? So you wanna make sure that you have a space carved out where it is comfortable and also allows you to stay upright because again, here we are, we're trying to promote uh, minimal swelling and keeping your head upright is going to reduce the swelling. And also you're gonna want to make sure that you have all your favorite things around you. So your blanket, something to read, your remote control, your tech gear, um, maybe a journal. A journal is always good to uh, write down your experiences during this time and always a mirror and a phone. I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. I'm all about the selfies and looking at yourself. You got to practice that smile. So you're not going to be able to stop smiling. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I love the neck pillow. I didn't know that I was going to, I didn't know to, that I needed that. But my sister, she actually ordered it for me. And so I got an Amazon delivery and she's like, I or did you get what I ordered for you? And I was like, I did, you know, but I hadn't opened it yet. And I opened it, I was like, oh, a neck pillow, hmm. you know? That is so it thoughtful. It was the best gift. It was the best gift because I didn't have a recliner. I just had like a, um, you know, like a couch with like a little chaise lounge type thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I was sleeping on. And I literally slept upright for like seven to 10 days. You're like, I kind of <laughs> like this now. <laughs> it was good because like I told you, on my seventh day, I had a speaking event. And I literally had to get, like, I had to look okay. <laughs> like, right. I could not, I could not. So I really was like all about the icing <laughs> and the sleeping upright. I was like, this head is not falling down. <laughs> you know what? I remember you talking about that. Like you had to go and speak soon. I'm so I glad did. I like, I knew this episode was for you for a reason. I did. Aww. Like, Aww. Um, and, and for the prepare, prepare your ride part, um, well, what did that look like for you? Yeah. So number one, you're going to be um, sedated. 
you know, to, to have the surgery. So you're not going to be able to drive yourself after surgery. So it's very important that you find a family member or a friend or a medical transport um, that can help you to get to Nubia for the surgery and then also be prepared to take you home after the surgery. And it is good to have somebody that can stay with you after the surgery as well, just in case you need some assistance as you're coming out of the anesthesia. Some people come out better than others and um, some may need a little bit more time to come back to life. Awesome. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what about tip number three that helps you um, recover from surgery? Okay. Tip three, hear me out. You need to make sure you have your food, the proper food, soft food, okay? My best tip for you on this is a lot of times our nerves and our anxiety starts to bubble up a few days before um, the surgery date. And so a good way to expend that nervous energy is to go shopping, go to the store and be prepared, go and get those protein shakes or go get your bottled water, go get your um, your pudding, your soft foods, your mashed potatoes, your ma uh, mac and cheese, all the things that you need um, to stay healthy and not hungry while you're healing. That's important. And, you know, you're saying soft food diet, right? So I feel like usually, at some other places where they have different processes, you know, you might actually be on a liquid diet right after surgery. Um, so you're saying it's a soft food diet. So how long was that soft food diet? Yeah, so it's definitely not contained to just a liquids. Soft food is anything that you can cut with a plastic fork. And with Nubia, you are to be on a soft food diet for at least the first four months. Usually at four months, everybody is released to go and eat whatever they would like. Awesome. Moving on down, let's go to tip number four. Well, tip number four is follow the doctor's orders. It is very important that you listen to them. They know your case more than anybody else. And so they have given you some instructions and it's best to follow those with the team. They will give you a um, sheet of aftercare instructions that will talk about the ice, we'll talk about resting upright, we'll talk about what you can and cannot eat, how to utilize your mouthwash, how to take your medication, and also how if you did get medication prescribed, use them as prescribed. And again, just listen to the doctor's orders. They may even give you a little manual um, uh, water pick. It looks like a little syringe. That thing was my best friend. So um, you wanna make sure that you are not using the electric water pick too quickly. You want to use what they give you and follow their directions. All right, so it's time for tip number five, which you said helped you the most in your recovery period. So. What is it? Tip number five is do not stress. You will be getting a new smile in 24 hours. And for me, that helped me the most. There was a lot of anxiety because of the unknown. I didn't know what was going to happen. And it is really difficult to accept that you're going to have your permanent teeth permanently removed, right? And so you're constantly thinking like, what could go wrong? But it's not about that. It's about what can go right. And what's going to go right is the very next day, we're getting pretty smiles. <laughs> and so that's exactly what happened. And whenever I changed my thought process to think about the positive that was going to happen instead of the coulda, woulda, shouldas, right, then I was able to really just kind of relax and enjoy every moment for what it was. And at the after 24 hours, I went in and I got this beautiful smile and I've never looked back. Do you think that getting your teeth in 24 hours versus, you know, maybe some other places where you could be in like a temporary denture for, you know, up to 10 plus months while they're fixing that permanent set. Do you think that the 24 hours helped you because, you know, they're in your mouth right away, right? Do you think that was the case? Yeah, absolutely. I think that getting... 
um, your final set, the the first with it, like your brain has to adjust to it. And so I I feel like if this was not the permanent, if it was temporaries and then another temporary and then another temporary, like you're constantly having to adjust and readjust and readjust. But having the permanence 24 hours later, it definitely helped me to transition. But the only other thing I would say, and it's not, it was just um, that we get a lot of questions about, is about speech, speech, talking, how, you know, like practicing how to talk and stuff like that. That was important for me, you know, because I was going to have to talk, right? And I was like, I, and and it was my first day back after. And so I was part of a team of maybe like, six to eight people and so everybody else had an opportunity to like brief brief leadership behind closed doors or and then you know brief like all the other leaders and I hadn't and remember like my teeth before like I I was number one taking a big step of just joining this group to do this um, and working with people that didn't know me but definitely like to present I wasn't comfortable opening my mouth and thinking people would take me seriously or hear me or respect me enough so mm -hmm. I just took the back seat but what ended up happening for the final presentation in front of not just the leader the leaders it was the top leader and the entire workforce the entire workforce like 1500 people okay and I ended up having to do that one because the girl that was supposed to do it she got pulled away and she couldn't do it because they moved the date. And she was like, I recommended for you to do it. And I was like, what? You know, and this was, but I knew I was having my procedure. And so I was like, okay, you know, but it was going to be my first day back to work to do it. And that, that was the whole situation. That was the whole situation. So my very first day back. So what I did while I was healing was I wrote everything out that I was going to say and I practiced it. I read it. I read it out loud. I had to change some words because I would get hung up on some words. So I, I had to change it to words that I was comfortable with saying or slow down. And so like I did a whole shebang <laughs> and then um, got to work and practiced it again. And then like and within the hour of me getting to work, and I remember the girl, she never, you know, she didn't like, she didn't know I was getting a procedure done, right? So right. she kind of looked at me and she just kind of smiled. She didn't say anything, you know, and she could probably tell I was kind of like really trying to enunciate well, but she never said anything. She was just like, you're doing so good. You're going to do so great. You know, and it was just like, okay, okay, you know. And so then I go in there and I do it and like not a stutter not i'm telling you it was Whoa. it was probably the best i ever spoke and so when i came out of his conference room into the hallway there was like a group of people waiting for me that did not know me never knew me and they were like we just had to come and see who this person was that was so articulate and you talk about crying like inside like i'm i'm smiling i'm happy and i can because i have the smile you know and it's like oh my god like i'm not afraid to be around people because i'm happy with my smile you know but as soon as i got in the elevator and i was by myself i just cried like tears of joy because it's like everything that i was like working for and working towards it just all kind of ended up in that day and you know like to the point like the leaders that not my like my not my supervisor or the person right above but the mm. person right above them that literally is like down the hall from where i work never even like acknowledged me ever in like the year or so that i worked there but when they found out i was the one presenting for the command they sat next to me and i think they were kind of nervous because they didn't really know me but they were kind of like you know like well, what's she gonna talk about you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and then what i did it was like total night and day. Now, all of a sudden, like they talked to me in the hallway and yeah, it was crazy. So I could talk forever. That <laughs> is your like, mo that was your moment. Like it was, it was so my moment and people yeah. still remember me from that. Yeah. I feel like what makes that story so huge is that um, you, you, when you told the flip side of that, of what had happened previously, right? And like oh, yeah. full, you're, you're like 
you're you flipped a script like you yeah absolutely stole the show everyone was in like you blew everyone away like right right it was like first day back it was first day back like redemption <laughs> seven day, like seven days after? yeah it was seven days it was seven days because um yeah it was that friday yep that friday i i went in and I, that was my first day back and no, and even my team didn't even know what I was doing. I just told them I was taking, I never take off work. So I told them I was taking off work. I was going to have a procedure. That was all I said. I was going to have a procedure. And I said, you'll know when I come back, you know, and um, my, my senior supervisor, she told me, she's like, you know, I kind of thought it might've been your team. She's like, but I didn't know, you know? And, uh, but yeah, when I came back, like everybody just, well, oh, hi, you know, and I just, hi, and nobody really. And then like, if they stopped and had a conversation with me, they're like, oh my God. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we talked about the top tips for surgery, but I know another big question people might have is, you know, what would all this cost you? Right. So if you're wondering what dental implants could cost you, you can download the dental implant cost guide in the description below.